Hi, everybody. Hope you're enjoying yourself wherever you may be and that you have much to celebrate as the school year ends, graduations, vacations, and hopefully relaxation. You're with VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School sports. I'm Roger Smith, and this is edition number two of our first Tyron Auto Last Look Back series, a retrospective on some of the very best of Fort Bend County sports in the year 2022-2023. Today, it's the consistent excellence of Clements Ranger Swimming and the Kempner kid, Noe Doe, who's only halfway through high school, doesn't have his driver's license yet, and yet he already has two state singles championships in his racket bag. We'll be back and get things started with two boys, two girls, and the marvelous coach of Clements Swimming, Lauren Neal, who is a homegrown Fort Bend ISD swimmer and a product of everything Fort Bend County. Enjoy this podcast brought to you by First Tire and Auto on VibeFortBend.com. First class service. First Tire and Automotive. Don't miss these first class specials at First Tire and Automotive during the month of May. Get those new tires before starting your summer trips. Buy three and get one tire free on Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal with installation, road hazard, and alignment. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and restrictions. Remember to book your appointment, too. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Okay, everybody, this is the First Tire and Automotive Last Look Back podcast series as all of the competition is over for Fort Bend ISD schools, but we want to look back at those who really achieved great excellence and ho-hum, we're at Clements High School where every year the swim and dive accomplishments are amazing and they're, they're extensive, so we're talking with Lauren Neal and we want to, first of all, Let's give a recap on how many seasons you've been in charge of the swim and dive program at Clements. This is my fourth year as head coach um, at Clements High School and my eighth year as a swim coach in the district. So when you took over, Clements already had the amazing reputation for huge achievements every single year, not just one stud swimmer on the girls' side or the boys' side, but just a team of, of great swimmers and great relay teams and all that. So can you, I guess, give a, a short paragraph, if that's possible, of the accomplishments that your swim team had this year? This year, so our boys and girls team are both undefeated in our regular swim meets, our dual meets. The boys walked away um, district champions. The girls placed second, but we're going to put those little extra points on the diving that we don't have. Um, regionals, we had... Can I look? Like, I have it all typed up. Yeah, you can look. In fact, we will take a quick break, and she wants to make sure that she gives us exactly the uh, accurate results of the year that has passed. We'll take a quick break and be back after this from First Tyron Automotive, which, by the way, has four great locations in Fort Bend County, one of them on Lexington in First Colony. We'll be right back. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. And we're back with Lauren Neal, head coach of Clements Swimming and Diving. And I guess what you've determined is that it's just such a long list of great accomplishments that you really can't say them all. But what can you say? I can say we had uh, six regional champions and uh, 
five new regional records and we had six boys going to state and our lone Kayla Fu. So overall, it was a great meet. The boys placed top five and the girls, I think, were in the top ten. Well, the standard of excellence is so high at Clements. Would you say that, uh, I mean, it sounds kind of unfair almost, but was it a little bit of an off year, maybe a rebuilding year? Is it fair to say that? Um, I don't think so. I think next year will be a rebuilding year, but this is the second time in the school's history where the boys placed top five at state and got a banner. Um, last year they were fourth and this year they were fifth. So I think this was one of our more successful years. And in your four years, has Clements basically won the district title in boys and girls each time? Um, the boys have won all four years. The girls have won two out of the past four years. But next year, we're shooting for those district championships again. I'm sure you are. Now, this is not some deep rabbit hole I'm going to go down. I just want to ask you quickly because I'm a little bit interested in, I think it's very interesting that water polo is now a UIL sanctioned sport. Mm -hmm. And do any of your athletes take part in water polo or is there kind of two different kinds of athletes? Um, this coming up school year will be our first season that we're doing water polo. Um, we do have some athletes that are going to participate in both. And then we have um, a handful of swimmers that only want to commit to swimming. So we're not pressuring any athletes to join the water polo team. We also have some non-swimmers who are going to be a part of our water polo team. So it's going to be an interesting learning year for sure. Um, our head water polo coach recently went to a water polo clinic and we are learning very quickly that it is a vastly different sport. Yes, but wow. I mean, you're a, if you're a boy, you're a real man if you can play water polo for a long time. Same thing with the girls. You know, I would never pick a fight with a girl that plays water polo. I mean, forget about it. So in your swimming career, did you ever take part in water polo, uh, maybe even recreationally? The only water polo experience I have is, you know, on our off season days playing something called animal ball, which was <laughs> water polo without any rules. So yeah, I'm not very well versed in the water polo realm. And that's why we have a uh, coach Bowen coming on to lead the water polo team. And that wasn't uh, boys and girls. You said there are no rules, but I mean, I just, I don't. I, I would worry about the uh, the the health and safety of the girls playing against teenage boys in water polo where there are no rules. Oh, we played against the boys. It got very physical sometimes. Um, I think the girls were a lot more aggressive than the boys, but it was fun. Nobody went to the hospital, so it was okay. <laughs> Did you wear those those uh, ear protectors that we see? It was no no helmets, mm -hmm. no equipment, nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing. <laughs> okay. Well, I have an even greater respect for you now. So uh, I am interested in that. And I, I did notice that I can't remember if it was boys or girls from Brazoswood, the high school with the exact same color scheme as Clements with the navy blue and Columbia blue. It was either girls or boys. And Foster, either girls or boys, won the very inaugural mm -hmm. championships in water polo. So um, let me ask you this. Did you feel pressure when you took over four seasons ago, just thinking kind of like uh, when Barry Switzer became the coach of the Cowboys after Jimmy Johnson has just won two consecutive Super Bowls, were you kind of thinking, I just want to keep this train rolling in the same direction rather than undo things and change the culture? Yes. Um, so I grew up here in the Fort Ben ISD area. I actually swam at Austin High School. So ever since I was in high school, Clements has always been the best swim team. And when I got the opportunity to interview here, I jumped on it so fast. So I was just really honored and excited to keep up this legacy, but also build my own culture into it as well. So it's a uh it's a swimming life, you know. Sometimes the NFL Network has a football life, and they'll do an, a long special. They could probably do one on you. And I'm not going to ask you a bunch of questions about this because, you know, I have plans to do a halftime interview with you and your husband. Mm -hmm. He was swimming for an opposing high school. Mm -hmm. That's where you met at a, a district swim meet. And the rest is history. 
you're now happily married and you have, is it one or two beautiful children? We only have a dog, <laughs> but uh, we're working on it. Well, and I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I kind of mixed you up, I guess, with somebody else who is a, a Fort Bend coach mm -hmm. who is married. So I'm sorry about that. But, no but I'll go ahead with whatever you were going to say. Get me out of this in my little faux pas. <laughs> um, yes. So um, I'm really lucky to have a partner that was also a club and high school swimmer. He is Clement's swim team's number one fan. He also thinks he's like an honorary coach. I have to remind him that you are not. Get off the pool deck. Um, <laughs> but I really love having his support. All right. And one final question, because not everybody who's listening to this is involved in swimming. They don't really know just what it takes. I think it's appropriate that as I talk to you, we're inside the Clements cafeteria and I met you at, oh my goodness, the early time of uh, 8.30 a.m. Mm -hmm. But what is it like just about every swim and dive athlete has to show up before the sun comes up? What's the daily routine when you're practicing in season for swimming and diving? So I'm a little biased, but I think being a swimmer is one of the toughest um, sports in the world. So you're up before the sun, and one of the worst things, in my opinion, I think about swimming is actually jumping into the pool. That very first initial jump, you're always wet, you're always cold, and uh, practice is not a time where you get to, you know, hang on the sidelines, hang out with your buddies, talk. You are constantly moving for that hour and a half or two hours. You maybe get to chat 10 seconds in between um, your intervals or breaks, but you have to be mentally tough too. Um, you're staring at a black line at the bottom of the pool while holding your breath for about an hour and a half. So here at Clements, our practice starts at 5.45 a.m. Um, and they're out at 7.15. It's dark, um, it's cold. You'll talk to Logan here in a second. He is Mr. Um, frozen Man all the time, always shivering. Uh, but it's just, it's, it's rough. You have to be mentally fit as well as physically fit. And you have to want to be there because if you don't want to be there, it's going to be a miserable time. And just estimate this, what percentage of the kids walk into, I think it's Don Cook Nauditorium mm -hmm. for those practices. How many are smiling a genuine, sincere smile percentage wise? Um, so they are walking in as zombies and that's my job as a coach to bring the energy and positivity to the morning practice on deck. Um, by the time they get going after warm up, they're usually more awake and in a more positive mood. And the good thing about a swim team is you get to experience this as a team. And because it's such a tough sport, having all those people around you doing the same thing is what really makes it special. Well, I'll tell you what, what it really makes, it makes it special for me to just do these things on VibeFortBend.com. I love to observe teenagers. I like to watch them come together as a team and learn and strive and fight adversity and develop, you know, friendships that they'll have forever. But I don't want to be in charge of them. So my hat's off to you and all the other coaches for basically not just hurting these teenagers, H-E-R-D-I-N-G, but also getting them to go in the right direction and accomplish great things. So hats off to you. Thank you so much. And thank you for acknowledging uh, these awesome swimmers. Yes, it's swimming's not a radio sport. I can't really do live events, but I do want to really kind of shine a spotlight that uh, shows the great glory of, of what y'all do. And you mentioned uh, Logan Brown, and he's going to join us along with Hayden Bellotti when we come back on the first tire and automotive last look back at 2022-2023 on VibeFortBend.com. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUCAPP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care.
First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Welcome back to the First Tire and Automotive. Last look back at 22-2023. It's our series of podcasts on VibeFordMen.com, and it gives us a chance to recognize some sports that really don't lend themselves to live coverage on web radio. So that's why we don't do live broadcasts of swimming and diving. But what we do is we like to shine the spotlight on great achievements whenever we possibly can. And we have two boys from the Clement swim team, both graduating seniors, Hayden Bellotti and Logan Brown. And first of all, Hayden, let's talk about your plans. What's the next step in your education and your competitive swimming? Yes, sir. So the next step is that um, I'll be heading to the University of Virginia this fall. And uh, when I'm there, I plan on obviously swimming there and eventually majoring in uh, finance. All right, and and what made Virginia the choice, and uh, what schools might Virginia have beaten out to get you to sign on? Um, what the at start I was focusing on UT, UVA, Florida, and uh, Texas A&M, but eventually it just came to what was the best fit for me in terms of like the team. It was mostly the team because all these schools kind of offered the same um, the same package in terms of academics, like and all of that. But um, at the end of the day, it just came down to the team. All right. And we'll go to Logan now. And Logan Brown, you are the FAB Award winner. That means you were judged in all of Fort Bend ISD. You were the top boys swimmer. And congratulations for that. But that's really, when you think about the numbers of people that you're competing against, that's one of the smallest of your of your accomplishments. But let's talk about what's next for you, where you're going to school, and who were the schools that you were considering. Yes, sir. So I'm going to Texas A&M University in the fall, and I'm going to major in business, probably in either finance or accounting. And um, the other schools that I considered were, were NC State, Virginia, and uh, University of Texas. And honestly, for my decision, I felt like I wanted to stay close to home. So I feel like Texas A&M was probably the best fit all around academic and for swimming. And that's why I chose to go there. Those are all great schools, but I commend you for that. I'm not an Aggie, but I'm an Aggie dad. So that's great. And it is close. So um, let's let's first of all find out how your swim career began. Hayden, when was the first time that you thought of a pool as a, a place where you had the drive to swim competitively rather than just a recreational spot? I think, like, that probably started when I was, like, 12 to 14, when I truly, like, started to grasp, like, a love for the sport. I think before that, it was just, like, I was always good at it, and that's why I stuck to it. But then um, eventually, like, when I became, like, more conscious of, like, what I was doing in the water um, and my achievements and such, like, it made me want to get more and more like higher status that really is something that i just love to watch kids as they develop and grow and they sort of discover something wow i could be really good at this so were either of you involved in what i call the well it's not what i call it it's the name of the organization southwest houston recreational swim league where you have the great wood gators and the new territory tarpons sugarland sharks did either of you get involved in that yes sir so, I was on the Sweetwater Surfers. <laughs> I've never heard of them. I guess they were probably too good that they didn't compete against the Meadows Marlins, which was where uh, my boys were in. Did you do that, Hayden? Yes, sir. I was on the first Colony Gators. Yeah. You all remember seeing each other um, in times. meets like that? Yes, sir. A few times. I remember going to, uh, what's it called? All Stars. And I remember, well, now, I, like, when I look back at videos from, like, races from 10, 12 years ago, Hayden was in the same heat, so it's kind of cool to see that. Yeah, uh, and I know what I remember about it is if you're a parent involved in that, you have to do cookouts, you have to hand out ribbons, you have to set up tents. Man, it was, uh, 
it was a lot. I don't. I wouldn't want to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> but but it was a great uh, opportunity, and it was it was great to see the kids. That many of them say, you know, swimming is something that I love to do, want to do. Um, do either of you have siblings who have competed for Clements, or um, or maybe younger ones? Uh, Logan, what you got? I do. I had a sister. She graduated in 2021, and she swam at A&M her freshman year, but then that was the only year she swam. But, yeah, she was state bronze medalist her senior year, mm -hmm. so swam with her pretty much my whole entire life. That's a good productive career, but do you ever kind of give her the business about how you were a much more accomplished swimmer than her? Uh, <laughs> in a nice way, yeah, I do. Yeah, well, that's good. You don't want uh, siblings, you know coming to blows, you know, having a brawl. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We're talking with Hayden Bellotti and Logan Brown, and we'll talk about, um, I guess, the legacy they want to leave and, and the memories that they will have of swimming for the Columbia and Navy Blue of Clements High School. This is VibeFortBend.com. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm talking, of course, about Xfinity. Now, Houston won't like me saying this, but this is bigger than the moon landing. You didn't hear from me, though. <laughs> oh, we heard you, Neil. You did? Yeah, we hear everything, Neil. We should talk when you get back. Yes, this is that big. Now through June 25th, new customers can switch to Xfinity Internet and get one line of unlimited intro mobile and Wi-Fi equipment free for two years. You heard that right, free for two years. It's all included for just $50 a month with a two-year price guarantee and no annual contract. Now that is one giant leap for mankind. Don't wait. Get it all with Xfinity, home of the Xfinity 10G network. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. After promo, regular rates apply. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Actual speeds vary. All right, boys, so this is the end of the line for you. You're saying goodbye to Clements High School. You may come back here for some event in the future, but you're going to graduate and, and move on to other things and some of the things you will forget that happened here, but I know there are a lot of memories. So, Hayden, what what is it about Clements that you're going to remember the most fondly? Mm, probably the culture around this entire school and how they – Obviously, uh, the support of our team and everyone around the school, like, we have a very high, um, what's the word, work ethic for all aspects, not only sports, but also academics. But um, I think that's very important to have, obviously, to leave outside of high school and into college. And by the way, are you an emotional guy? Do you cry easily, maybe when watching a movie? And will you cry when you walk out these doors the last time? Uh, I don't think I'll cry when I walk out these doors, but uh, maybe, like, I get a little, little teary-eyed when I'm watching a good movie or so, something like that. Okay, so Logan, how about you? Uh, do you start squirting the tears out when you, you look back at something that really means a lot to you? Um, maybe when I look back at the memories I've had over the past four years, because when we came in as freshmen, me and Hayden, the seniors really welcomed us with open arms, because, you know, there's some schools that like to make fun of their freshmen or give them hard times, but they really took us in as like a family almost, and we really tried to do that to the freshmen and underclassmen this year as well, to give them that same experience. So it's a positive thing that yields good results when the program frowns upon hazing. <laughs> yes, 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 sir. <laughs> okay, so any one singular memory that is the greatest rev involving swimming at Clements as you go off to your next stop at Texas A&M? Um, I think the greatest memory was probably this year when me and Hayden both won our events at state because we've been swimming together for 10 plus years and to finally like close out on a very high note it was really really happy to see that all right so the very best to both of you Hayden and Logan and go out and accomplish great things and don't forget about Clements and maybe one of these days you come to a homecoming football game Maybe I can do an interview with you and we'll, we'll play it during halftime or something. So all the best to you. Thanks for being with us. Yes, sir. Thank you for having us. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. And we'll be back with the girls. We've got Kayla Fu and Caroline Hendrickson. They're on deck, not the pool deck, but, uh, you know, figuratively speaking. We'll be back with them on VibeFortMen.com. First class 
service. First Tire and Automotive. Don't miss these first class specials at First Tire and Automotive during the month of May. Get those new tires before starting your summer trips. Buy three and get one tire free on Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal with installation, road hazard, and alignment. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and restrictions. Remember to book your appointment too. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAndAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back, everybody, to the First Tire and Automotive Last Look Back podcast series on VibeFortBend.com. We always are very sad when it all comes to an end, when the last of the baseball and softball teams get eliminated, and then we're done with our broadcast for the year. But we really need to honor some folks, and we wanted to honor the best of the best. And Clements Swimming and Diving, both the boys and the girls, is always outstanding. It's the gold standard in District 26A. And we are visiting this morning with Caroline Hendrickson and Kayla Fu from the girls' side. And first of all, Caroline, since you are a senior and you're on your way out, I want to ask, is there going to be more swimming for you when you get into college? Because pretty much everyone who graduates from Clements goes to college. Uh, maybe just recreationally, but I'm not swimming in college, so plan to end it here. I know it is so very demanding, and I perfectly well understand that. But I would ask, uh, do you love swimming enough where maybe you want to be an instructor, even if it's just a part-time thing? Would you like to coach? Uh, you want to stay in the game of swimming? Oh, I definitely still coach now. Like in high school, I do summer league events, but I love coaching other kids and teaching them how to swim. So I wouldn't make it my main career, but I definitely love to help the community like that. All right. We're also with Kayla Fu. Now, Kayla has one more year at Clements. She is a junior this year and quite a few accomplishments for you. But can you describe, let's, let's talk from the personal standpoint of saying goodbye to all those people who have been great teammates and they are seniors and they won't be with you every single morning for those practices. Yeah, I think it'll definitely be hard. I think these people have been great influences on the team. You know, everybody looks up to them because they act in a way where it's like, they're very respectable and admirable. They really carry the team and I think they really represent what Clemens is all about. So I am very sad to see them go. You know, I've been swimming with these guys for years, so it'll be definitely be a hard transition for me. Let's talk about the beginning of your swimming career. Um, you know, sometimes kids are on that, what it was the uh, Southwest Houston Recreational Swim League where you have first colony teams and great wood teams and the Meadows and Marlins and all these different ones. Is that how you got started? When was the first time you got into a pool and thought of it as a competitive place, not just a recreational place? Um, so I think I was actually six years old when I started and I was on Commonwealth Piranhas. And yeah, I think that's when it really started. That's when I started racing and realizing that this was just more than just having fun. And uh, did you have a big rivalry in that Southwest Houston Recreational Swim League? Perhaps the New Territory Tarpons or someone like that? Definitely Greatwood. <laughs> Greatwood Gators. Yeah, they were, they were legit. They were definitely dominant when I was swimming. So, yeah. All right, Caroline, how did your competitive swimming part of your life get going? Yeah, so my mom always swam in high school, so she put us in those summer league teams as soon as we were younger. So, like, I always saw my older brothers swimming, and I was, like, rushing to get into the pool, and she'd always have to, like, lock the gate and stuff, so I'd never jump in. But I did summer league up until I was in high school, so that's how I started. And it's a positive thing. I'm going to just assume, even though I just met you, I'll bet that you were happy to continue swimming, and it wasn't one of those things where she kept uh, have pushing you toward the pool. Oh, no, yeah, I always loved it. Like, I was always eager to go, and I still am eager to go. I never really burnt out on the sport, so that was great. Well, you know, that, the reason I say that, I've, I've been around so many decades. I'm, I'm uh, literally three times as old as the two of you, not put together. <laughs> but um, there are so many movies where you have the bitter conflict between parent and child, where the parent keeps pushing the child who really doesn't want to do the sport and it's most of the time it's 
the kid loves the sport as much as the parent did. So uh, I've always gotten thought that was really kind of a ridiculous thing. Now let's go through your accomplishments. First of all, Caroline, you're, you specialize in the 50 freestyle and the 100 freestyle, and you earned achievements as in uh, all region, all district, and academic, all district. I think I said one of those a little bit wrong, the regions part. Oh, yeah. Clarify that for me. Oh, so I just, like, I qualified for regions, and I was able to final in regions, but, you know, that's where I finished the season strong. You know, I did the best I could, but I, you know, I had fun. It was good. That's one of the best things about swimming. I mean, it's kind of like track and field. If you do the very best that you could, you can be satisfied with it. And there are different sports where sometimes – if you don't win the last game or the last match, you just kind of feel like, oh, it was failure. But if you know you did your best, I remember that from track and field. Um, I, I didn't even qualify for the finals in my event in track and field when I was a senior, but I felt good about it because I really felt like I maxed out. So Kayla, 100 freestyle, 50 freestyle, 100 fly. So you like to do things fast. You don't like yeah. to, to make it take forever to get something done, right? That's correct. I don't think I have endurance at all. So <laughs> that's all I got, yeah. Okay, well, you better develop some as you move into your adulthood. <laughs> I was just, just kind of making a joke there. I'm sure you realize that. All state, state championship as a sophomore, academic all district, all three years. And I see that state champion as a sophomore, it's a – it just shows you that it's so competitive in the state of Texas, especially in swimming. Just because you're a state champion as a sophomore doesn't mean that you're, you're necessarily going to repeat. And it doesn't mean you failed if you don't repeat. But do you happen to know who was the state champion in the event where you had won the previous year? Uh, was that person an upperclassman um, or what? Do you remember who it was? I do. So her name's Jada Scott, and she is a current senior this year. And she is very impressive. I would say that she definitely deserved first place. I in which say. high school did she come from? She's in San Antonio, but I don't know the exact high school. Well, I was hoping for a Houston area school, but as long as it's not a Dallas school, that's good. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take a quick break, and we'll continue with Kayla Fu and Caroline Hendrickson as we're on the first tire and automotive last look back at the year 2022-2023 and great accomplishments for Clements Swimming and Diving. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Welcome back. We continue with two of the best swimmers for the Clements High School team. On the girls' side, Kayla Fu and Caroline Hendrickson. And Caroline has already said that she's a senior and she's not going to continue her competitive swimming career in college. But do you have plans to do that? or not and if you do do you have a commitment to a certain school so yes i do plan on swimming in college and i recently committed to the university of pennsylvania so i will be swimming all four years there and just carrying on with what i'm doing now okay that's great because there's a particular pen swimmer i hope that you outswim him and make sure he doesn't compete anymore but you know that that's going to be a tall order but anyway what made you choose pen um, so it's actually my brother who went there first and I didn't really realize what they had until he committed. And so I really want to go for the business school. It's Wharton and I know that it's really high among the ratings. So that's what really got me. And how much older is, is he than you? And will you get to swim at the same time for Penn? So he is currently a rising sophomore. So I will be swimming with him once we are in college. So that's great. 
That is great. It'll make it so much easier. I mean, it's a long way off and it's an adjustment, but it's great if you have your brother there, assuming that the two of you have a really good relationship, which I see most of the time. So Caroline, um, looking forward to college and what you're going to uh, study for your career. What kind of career do you think you have ahead of you? So both my parents studied business and I'm not like some crazy math whiz or anything. So I want to continue studying business. I haven't decided like what aspect yet, but maybe something in like accounting and auditing or something like that. Okay. So you're not a math whiz, but you do basically want to go into the business side of it where you keep track of everything and you know if the company and the team are moving in the right direction. Yeah. I just don't want to have to deal with like doctor stuff or any of the building stuff, but the math and business I can handle. Okay, well, uh, I want to give both of you a chance if there's anything on a personal note that you want to say. Uh, this is, uh, we want to get as many people as possible to listen to this podcast, and, and we'll make sure that you find out what the link is on vipefortbend.com. First of all, uh, Caroline, since you're the older of the two, anything that you want to say uh, in the way of thank yous and tributes and a final message? Um, probably just to like thank the team. I mean, this year especially, we just had a really good bond with girls and guys both. And like this probably was the most supportive team I had throughout the whole four years. So just like a huge thank you to the team for really helping people in and outside of the water. And Kayla, what would you say? It's your little swan song, not for Clements, period, but for your ju your junior year. I um, just want to say thank you to, you know, the seniors because they've been incredibly helpful in everyone's, you know, some career and also my family because they've been there the whole way. So. And speaking of family, any younger siblings still coming up who are destined to swim for Clements? No, it's just me and my brother. So no one else. All right. Well, thank you very much for being with us and wish you the very best. You next year here at Clements, Kayla and Caroline, as you move off into your your future, the wild blue yonder, the wild Columbia blue and navy blue yonder of Clements High School. And we'll be back with the amazing Noe Doe. You may know of him. He's a tennis player at Kempner and a state champion in a singles event twice already. What's he going to do for an encore? We're going to talk to him and his coach when we continue on the first Tire and Automotive Last Look Back series on BipeFortBend.com. First class service. First Tire and Automotive. Don't miss these first class specials at First Tire and Automotive during the month of May. Get those new tires before starting your summer trips. Buy three and get one tire free on Michelin, BF Goodrich, and Uniroyal with installation, road hazard, and alignment. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and restrictions. Remember to book your appointment too. Get to one of First Tire and Automotive's four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireandAuto.com. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUCAPP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. All right, everybody, welcome back to the last part of the second part of our first Tire and Automotive Last Look Back series as we have a retrospective on the year 2022-2023. And for Noe Doe of Kempner Tennis, it was really just second verse, same as the first. He's a state champion as a freshman last year and now state champion again as a sophomore. Welcome in, first of all. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. And I hope that uh, that uh, you're not too shy and that you'll kind of elaborate on some things with us. And at your side is Coach Ann Southard. First of all, Coach Southard, I want to thank you for your many years of service to the students at Kempner High School, both as a coach and a teacher. And this is Ann Southard, the head coach 2.0, because you were head coach a while back and then out of necessity. 
then you had to come back in. So give us a quick summary of that, if it's possible. Yes, I was asked to fill in for Coach Alexander, who last year at the state tournament unfortunately had a massive stroke, and so they needed somebody uh, to take over, and they asked me if I would, and I stepped in for my friend. So. Well, I'm glad that you were there to to you know fill in. It's such a, a tough and difficult time. Now, Noe, uh, I guess uh, my first thing that I want to ask you, I want to go back to the beginning. When was the first time somebody put a tennis racket in your hand? And at what point in your life, what age were you when you realized, hey, I'm pretty good at this and I really like it and want to be great at it? Well, the first time I ever picked up my racket was um, back in Evansville, Indiana. Um, it was I remember it was during the cold season of like November and December. And my dad, um, at, the round, at the age of like seven, he, he bought me a racket like a really cheap racket right and he he told me to like he, he um he took me to like an academy to help me train with tennis at that point i just i just took tennis as like a, like you know just for fun my dad saw it as, as like as an enjoyment for me and i also needed to exercise and like after like a year or a year or half a year after at indiana we my my parents and i moved to uh vietnam to um we have we had other plans in vietnam and so my dad wanted me to take um, tennis more seriously over there. And um, over in Vietnam, I um, I trained really hard over there. My dad took tennis more seriously. And like around at the age of like 10, um, that's when I started to become more serious. And yeah, that's when I knew um, I, I, I was like, yeah. I, I think I got this. <laughs> and you got pretty proficient at it, I guess, in a fairly short time. You kind of mentioned the, the half a year increment when you m moved back to Vietnam. And so how good were you early on? Was any part of the game difficult for you? I, I'd say I, would, I was just like good, but not like at the top of the country in Vietnam. But um, the, what is it? I felt like... I felt like I was really slow because I was like really chubby back then <laughs> and um, my serve wasn't so great and I wasn't tall as like any other kid but um, my, my, my dad was like one of the biggest motivators that helped me push forward and on to who I am today. Um, yeah, so I, really, I, I didn't have many advantages when I was younger but Motivation and hard work was the key factor to let me here today. All right, Coach Southern, when you were kind of pressed back into service as the head coach, did you know a lot about him or had you kind of maybe just gravitated away from the sport when you were not coaching? And, and did you know just how good this kid was? Last year, last school year in September, Coach Alexander came to me and said, I got this kid. So I knew early because um, Bryce said, I've, I've never had a, a player like this. And he said he's hitting the racket right out of my hand. And he was a very good player, Bryce. So I'd watched him play some tournaments last year, went to regionals to watch him, and it even went to state to watch him. So even before I was coaching, um, I would started watching Noe because he's phenomenal. And so it was a lot of fun. And then when they asked me uh, to come back, I was like, okay. And I knew what I had when uh, I came back. So, But he still surprises me because it was good, and then he's, still, he's kicking it up a notch, even getting better. So, All right, we are visiting with two-time state singles champion in the boys' division of Class 5A, Noe Doe of Kempner, and his coach, Ann Southern. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back on VibeFortBend.com. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. I'm talking, of course, about Xfinity. Now, Houston won't like me saying this, but this is bigger than the moon landing. You didn't hear from me, though. <laughs> oh, we heard you, Neil. You did? Yeah, we hear everything, Neil. We should talk when you get back. Yes, this is that big. Now through June 25th, new customers can switch to Xfinity Internet and get one line of unlimited intro mobile and Wi-Fi equipment free for two years. You heard that right, free for two years. It's all included for just $50 a month with a two-year price guarantee and no annual contract. Now that is one giant leap for mankind. Don't wait. Get it all with Xfinity, home of the Xfinity 10G network. 
Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless plan and auto pay with stored bank account. After promo, regular rate supply. Xfinity Mobile requires Xfinity Internet. Actual speeds vary. Welcome back. And before we went to that break, we were talking with Coach Southern, and, you know, she had heard from her predecessor about just how good Noe Doe was. But sometimes you can kind of look at a kid, especially a boy, um, and I have to look back and, and with sadness on this. The reason we're doing these podcasts now is because Ridgepoint got eliminated from the baseball playoffs because Cinco Ranch had this five-tool player on the baseball field who was a Greek god. And he, he had thrown five innings all year during the baseball season, and he throws seven innings and allows Camp, uh, Ridgepoint only one hit. It was heartbreaking. He was just a buzzsaw. There was nothing that the Panthers could do. Now, there's certain sports where you look at a boy and you say, wow, that guy is physically imposing. You can tell right away God has given him great gifts. But you look at Noe Doe, and he is very fit. But he's not going to scare you when you look at him. So what are some of the things that you've learned over the many years about tennis players and how they may not look physically imposing, but they can uh, they can make you look bad on the court? With Noe, it is determination. I mean, you can't obviously not going to see that until you watch him play. Like he's not going to walk on the court and go, oh, this kid is so determined. But he will fight hard. Once he starts to hit a ball, the sweet spot, when he hits a ball, it sounds different. Like other kids, they're going to hit it, good shots, that's fine. But when Noe hits it, there's a sound uh, that comes off his racket. And the kids know pretty quick. When they watch him move around the court, he's fast. He's, he anticipates well. He sets up points brilliantly. Um, and just his overall mindset, his focus, second to none. Noe, I know you would not have accomplished what you've already accomplished if you were kind of a, I don't know, a shy fly, as it were. But, you know, I, I know you are, you're very polite and considerate, but I also know there's got to be a competitive fire burning in your belly or you would not have achieved what you've achieved. What are some things that people don't know about you when they simply watch you play? Well, like... Like outside the court, I'm actually like very really, sometimes really shy and really funny at the same time. Um, when I'm like I'm more extroverted when when I'm when I'm around with my close friends, but when I'm on like the tennis court with people I do not know, I'm like I tend to be very shy and very introverted because I'm I, I it takes time for me to like get to know people, but I'm actually a very funny and uh, a considerate person uh, overall um, on the court. Um, one thing I put in my mind is like I have to beat you. Like that's one of like the things I put in my mind. Like regardless, if, regardless if I'm down at any time or any score, I like I was trained to you know fight for my life, whatever, wh- wh- like any any match. But when I'm off the court, um, I'm I don't I don't see the reason for me being like a, a really a really like fierce or cocky person off the court. So I I like to enjoy talking to my friends. And yeah, yeah, that's one of the, that's sometimes what people don't know about me. Have you ever walked up to an event where you're playing an, uh, an opponent who does not know you and maybe studied their face and do they ever kind of look past you like, well, where's my opponent? Is it this, this small guy over here? Do you ever see anything? It's a nonverbal communication that you pick up on where they underestimate you. Um, a lot of, my, well, the tennis, like many players, they t- they tend to be like very tall, like very around, like, I think like five, nine or above or five, eight above. And when they look at me, they look, they, they see, they tend to like, to, to like look at me at like a little kid and like they say, oh, this kid is not, this kid is not it for tennis. <laughs> yeah. My friend, my friend told me, he was like, you know, you don't look, you don't, you don't look too fierce on the court. You know that, right? I mean, well, on the court and outside too. I, I look too, I look too nice. I was like, yeah, I, I, I can't control that. But when I'm on the court, like it, it's a whole different situation on the court. I, I, I put my um, game face on and it's over. <laughs> Well, Coach Southern and I, we look like we're about the same age. So she may know this expression. The expression is dynamite comes in small packages. And so sometimes that can be the truth, especially there's so many great athletes. And I guess my favorite, not very tall athlete is Jose Altuve. I just love the way that, uh, yeah, 
He's, he's my favorite all time, and there's there's no question about that. Just love watching Jose and what he does to opponents, and I'm sure what you do is just as impressive. So let's talk about, okay, you've won the state championship in 5A singles as a freshman. You won the state championship in 5A singles as a sophomore. Is it fair to say you should win the championship next year, and do you feel any pressure? Um, <laughs> I do want to win next year again, but, uh, I, I feel, I feel the same pressure as, as I feel every single year. As I, I, th I would think freshman year would be the hardest because I absolutely did not know what was going on at state. I was just like, and people at my school, they're like, oh, how, how, how are you going to do at state? How are you going to do state? I was like, I don't even know what state is. <laughs> so I was, I felt the most immense pressure when I was a freshman, but now as a sophomore, I got like a bit more experience with what it's like to be at state and represent Kepner High School. So as for next year, I, I will feel the same pressure, but I think I'll be more experienced with the the environment and the people around there. It gives me joy to do this interview because I have two boys who both graduated from Kempner, one in 2015, one in 2020, and I've heard that expression many times, K high or die, so I'm pretty sure that Coach Southard has heard that many times. Is there anything in particular that, that you like to say about Kempner that makes it a unique place? Obviously, the diversity it makes it a great place. And even though we're, um, we always think of like we're the, the, the kind of the secret in the district. You know, not not a lot of people know necessarily about all the good things at Kempner. But we've had a lot of success, uh, particularly in the last few years. Whether it be athletic success with tennis and swimming and soccer and cross country, but then also fine art success with theater and dance. And we've just uh, academically, I mean, we've really been knocking out of the park. So I'm very proud that Noe's accomplishments can be right up there with all the other accomplishments from Kempner. And Kempner has also sent several guys to the NFL and Simeon Woods Richardson, who graduated, I think, in 2019, is is now pitching in the major league. So it's it's something to certainly be proud of. And so, uh, Noe, you get to serve the last point here, as it were. And, and is there anything else that you want to say to our listeners as they go off into the summertime and uh, any kind of preview about what you plan to do? in your athletic career as a junior? Well, I hope everyone um, goes out in the summer and exercise and should definitely try tennis because tennis is one, is one of the sports where you have to physically, mentally, and um, have strategic skills to play. And tennis is like a very hard sport in, in the summer, especially with the, the Texas heat. It's like 190s to 100 degrees, and the court is... Well, like well, Noah, you have to be ready to play in the Australian Open someday, <laughs> and it, when it's winter here, it's summer there, so you got to get ready for that. So that's yeah. what it's for. Yes, yes. And um, I, I, do, I do plan on training hard this summer uh, in, in the hot wheat, in the hot heat. <laughs> And yeah, I hot heat, hot heat. <laughs> Sorry, that's like a hot water heater. Yeah, and so I will do my best to represent Kempner High School for the next year. And uh, you know, this should help you when you do get to the Australian Open. They put a roof over the place now. <laughs> They have the retractable roof, so it won't be quite as oppressive as it's been in the past. I thank both of you for joining us, and uh, continued success to you, Noe. Thank you, thank you. And continued success to you, Coach Southern, as you ride the coattails of this amazing young athlete. Yeah, I'm proud to I'm proud to be a part of his journey. All right, we'll be back to wrap it up on VipeFortBend.com right after this. First Tire and Automotive has been putting your health and your car safety first for over 20 years. First Tire and Automotive stands for family, integrity, reliability, service, and trust. That's why Fort Bend families know. Take your vehicle to First Tire and Automotive first and forever. Check out the website for service and savings at firsttireandauto.com. Make your appointment today. With four great locations, Eldridge, First Colony, Greatwood, and now in Cinco Ranch, there is one around the corner from you. All four stores is now open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com. That wraps it up for part two of our First Tire and Auto Last Look Back series. And keep coming back to VibeFortBend.com to find them all. 
Warming up in the bullpen is our Ridgepoint baseball story, dropping Monday the 29th of May as the Last Look Back series continues. And until then, goodbye, God bless, and enjoy your Memorial Day weekend from VipeFortBend.com.